Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 131st Q tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Whew, we have been doing a lot of uh, multimedia lately, and we're going to kind of continue on with that. This might be the last multimedia, I'm not sure. But the gist of multimedia is that um, it's very complex. There's a lot to it, a lot more than what we've really covered. And, well, I wanted to point out that if you go to examples in Q Creator, a lot of people don't really pay attention to this. Um, if you just type in video, which I've already done, so it's already filtered, you'll see there's some some examples in here, and you can actually sort by compiler. So, you know, there'll be like different ones for, well, it's not really working for mine, but um, if you have like Visual Studio, there'll be different ones. But you notice how most of their examples are QML. So, it's good to know that they're there. And just play around with some words like media, and you'll see there's different like audio device sampling and things like that and how to do uh, a spectrum is that what it's called a spectrum somebody asked me Brian how do I do this and I was like well if you open examples and blah 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 so just be aware that that's out there but I'm also a big fan if you've watched any of my other tutorials of doing things that aren't here and that you may not find out on the internet somewhere so we're going to make a graphical video player with a little seek bar and all that so let's just Create a new project. We're going to make a cute widgets. And let's call this uh, Video GUI. Next. Now, usually we do dialog, but we're going to do Q main window. So just make sure it's Q main window. Generate form. We're going to hit next. And it'll finish. All right. So. Let's give this a good build. And I'm going to run this just in case you haven't seen one of these before. You, you, I don't know if the video can pick it up, but there's this little, yeah, there's this toolbar here. And you got this little status bar at the bottom. And that's what a Q main window is. You'll have a toolbar at the top, a status bar at the bottom, and you have this central widget area. So it follows a pretty similar design pattern. All right, so. First things first, we need to add a few things here. We're going to say multimedia and multimedia widgets. Very important that you add those or this tutorial will not work for you. And once you've done that, give it another good build just to make sure everything links and everything's working and you should see that. Sometimes I actually do a rebuild just in case. Sometimes Q gets a little funky. I don't know what the deal is, but and you can see how it's it's linking here. So it's got the uh, media widgets and the multimedia. That's how you can tell it's actually linking to those lab those libs. Sorry, I bit my tongue the other day, and it's really just bugging the heck out of me. So if I like sound like a bubbling idiot, a I am a bubbling idiot, and b my tongue's kind of hurting a little bit. So. Now we're going to jump in here, and I've got these icons because I didn't want to waste your time drawing icons. I've got them already there. I'm just going to copy and video GUI. We're just going to paste them right in here. I'm going to add a new. We're going to add a resource file, and we'll call it uh, resources. And it's been a while since we worked with a resource file, so I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit here. You need to add a prefix, and we're going to call it slash images. And then in your prefix, you can add files. Ta-da! Just add a whole bunch of those there. So now we've got our pause, play, stop, and the folder icon. I also want to go out here to video 2. Maybe I don't. Hmm. Let me pause the video. I need to find that sample video that we had. Okay, I found the our little sample video here. I just wanted to use a video that I know works, that we're not fighting with codec issues through this tutorial. So when you download this project from my website, you'll have the icons and the sample and everything be ready to go. All right, so we've got our resource file in here. Let's close that. Save all. And you should note, 
um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but these images need to be in a subfolder of your project, otherwise it won't be able to find it when you build it. And of course, give it a good build, make sure it finds everything. Bring up your main window. Now, we may not have done this in a while, so I'll also go over this. This is your window designer, because I know we've been doing a lot of command line stuff lately. And your toolbar's here, and your progress bar's here. Now, you remember Qt uses a concept called actions, so you can make a new action. And we'll call it open. And notice how it says object name op action open. And open a file. And the icon, this is where you can say choose a file or choose a resource. We're going to choose a resource. And ta da! There's our icons. So, once we have an action, we can just drag and literally drop it right up onto the toolbar. You can also say go to slot and then choose triggered and there's a source code. So when they click that button this little function right here will get called and I'm just gonna flesh those out for the rest of the window here. Oh, let's see, play mm -hmm. gosh I really bit my tongue. Man that's really sucking and it's really stupid how I did it because I was playing Skyrim. I just I got hooked on Skyrim. Don't ask me why. Skyrim's like an old game, but it was on Steam. It was 15 bucks for the Legendary Edition, so I got like everything. And man, I took this shot with my arrow because I was an archer, and I know like I sound like a total nerd right now, but I, <laughs> I took a shot with an arrow and I missed. And I went to say "son of a," you know, you can expletive finish the rest of that sentence for me. But uh, I bit my tongue when I did it, so it didn't really sound all that great when I did it. Actually, we're going to right-click, and you can add a separator in here. It puts, I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but there's this little bar that separates them. We're going to add play, pause, and stop. All right. And you can also... Actually, let me... You can type up here and make a menu. And then in the menu, you can drag and drop whoops, into the menu. So we'll say uh, video. And if that's not abundantly clear, you type up here to make the menu item. This little sub-menu appears. And then you can drag and drop the actions you want up in there. I don't, yep, you can do multiple. Let's do video. Ah, it only did the one. And you can kind of, you know, move them around that little sub menu wherever you want them, put that little red bar. So we have play, pause, stop. And then make sure we've got our associated slots. So, yeah, Skyrim, really cool. I've been playing Dota a lot, but Skyrim just, I don't know why, just totally got my attention here. So let's give this a good build. And let's run it and make sure our icons, our beautiful little icons appear. And sure enough, they do. So the premise of this is we're going to have these buttons. We'll click this and open file dialog. Play, pause, stop. The video will show here. And then down in this little bar, we'll have a progress bar and a track bar where we can, you know, or actually we'll, we'll put the track bar over here and then we'll have the progress bar here so we can seek through the file and see the progress. Man, that was mouthful. Let's speed this up a little bit here. I don't want this to be a 30 minute video. I get complaints from some people. They're like, your videos are too darn long. Other people say they're not long enough. So, so whoops. Include. See, I say we got to speed things up and then I start talking. Q Media Player. Ah. Damn you, physics. Q Media Player. We're just going to include a few things here. My keyboard's acting all funky on me. Q video widget. Now, a Q video widget, um, remember from our last tutorial, it's what the video is rendered on. If um, Think of a video like a painting. The canvas would be the video widget. And then we're going to do a Q file dialog. And let's just do uh, Q progress bar. And hmm. 
Yeah, let's do this. And include Q slider. All right. Down here, we're going to say Q media player. And we're just going to make these super quick. Q video widget. We'll call this video widget. Q progress bar. We'll call this bar. And Q slider. Just call that the very descriptive slider. Whew. All right, so. We've got the bulk of our program fleshed out here. We're going to actually go in here. And now we're going to say we're going to make a new player. Ah, keyboard. Damn you. We're going to make a new Q media player. And someone once asked me, why do you make pointers when you're in a form? You can just make it a local variable. You don't have to make a pointer. Um, pointers are actually a little bit easier to work with, in my opinion. Uh, a little bit more dangerous if you don't follow some you know, memory rules. But I just, I don't know, personal taste, I like working with pointers. Because what happens is when you go to connect signals and slots, I always forget if it's not a pointer. You know, I forget to put the reference to, and then it gets all, all screwed up. All right, so this dot set central widget. Remember, the central widget is that central image. Um, we're going to do the video widget. And actually, let's back up here. And we're going to say player dot set video output. We're going to set our canvas here. So what we're doing is we're saying, all right, we want to render the video to the video widget. And we want that video widget to be the central widget. So the video is going to appear right here in the center. Cute will take care of all that for us automatically. All right, now let's just work this out a little bit here. And we're going to do our open file, open file dialog. QString file name. We're going to get open file name. And this always, I don't know why, I always have to look at my notes because this always kind of messes me up the way this is laid out. Open a file. This is the title, obviously. And then we need to specify video files. And in like a real world application, you would, you'd really want to, you know, make that a little more professional by searching and seeing what available codecs you have and things that are just vastly beyond the scope of this tutorial. Um, I should note, if you're looking for industrial strength video playing capabilities, um, there's a open source video player called VLC. And I can't multitask here for some reason. My tongue's really bugging me. Um, anyways, there's, if you Google cute, the letter Q and T, VLC, cute VLC, you, somebody's actually taken VLC and wrapped it inside of cute and made it actually really, really easy to work with. Um, the reason why I'm not uh, I'm not doing a tutorial on that, which I actually might, is because it doesn't really follow pure cute, and I've been kind of I don't know I've been kind of bashed in the past where people are like, well, you shouldn't use third-party libraries, da 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 da. And I tend to just ignore them and blow that off. But uh, from local file, got kind of sidetracked here. That and um, it is actually a pretty complex topic, and I'm already getting a flood of mail from this. So, so what we're really doing here, and let's kind of explain this, is we're going to pop open this dialog box. We're going to call stop to make sure it's stopped. We're going to set the media, and we're just doing the local file which we chose in the file dialog, and then we're going to play it. 
Now, I have to preface that with an industrial strength program. You're going to want to make sure that the video is valid, that it's playable, etc., etc., etc. This is a very dumbed-down example. We just kind of want to, you know, elementary level, high school level kind of player here. Oops. We're going to show a message here. Maybe if I can spell. And then through the magic of copy and paste, we can just kind of, you know, do some quick coding here. We're going to pause. So we're going to. Whoopsie. Don't know what button I hit, but that was kind of awkward. Now, the difference between pause and stop stop will stop playing and actually close the file, or I should say, it goes all the way back to the end, where pause will just keep the file open and stay exactly where you are. All right, so let's actually give this a good run and see if our beautiful little file player works here. Yeah, now you can see this black box here. That's the video widget. We're going to open. Oh gosh, good luck finding anything in my mess of a hard drive here. I really need to set up another virtual machine. Hmm. Why is the sample not in there? That's going to bother me. Hmm. -hmm. Let me go look. MPG. Start on MPG. Should actually grab it. Let me pause the video once again. Hmm, that is just weird. Anyways, on uh, on Windows, you can actually have the filter, but on my Linux box, I had to actually change this to star dot star. Um, you can actually set the filter, but it's just getting the filter out of here. So, change that to star dot star, and then it was actually doing it. So let's actually close that and run this just so you, I can show you that it's actually working. And we're going to go to Video GUI, Samples. So it is playing, and you'll see this, or maybe not, depending on what platform. That's debug information from the Q Media Player. Now, if we pause, you notice how the video pauses. We can play it again. We can pause it, play it, pause it. Now, if we hit stop, notice how it says stopped. We hit play, and notice how it jumps all the way back to the beginning. That's the difference between pause and stop here. So now our goal is we want to put a little track bar down here so we can seek through the video and a little progress bar so we can see how far into the video we really are. And bear with me, this may take me a minute because I'm it's not actually in the original plan for this. I'm kind of like, you know, freestyling it right now. So this may be very good or very bad, I'm not sure. Slider equal new Q slider. We're gonna see how much I remember about these objects here. And bar equal new Q progress bar. All right, now if I remember right, we got to say slider. Whoops. Set orientation. Otherwise, it's going to be a vertical and we want a horizontal. And now we're going to say. UI status bar and we're going to add a permanent widget and let's add the slider first and via magic of copy and paste somebody told me what the command was to copy the entire line I just don't remember what it is alright let's run this make sure that's actually gonna work yep so there is our slider and there's our progress bar which don't work because we haven't wired up the signals and slots, which is what we're going to do right now. All right, so let's actually connect up. And we're going to say player. What do you guys think of the uh, the new connect signals and slots? I, I kind of like it. It took me a while to really get used to it, but now that I've actually gotten used to it instead of typing signal and slot and having all these other mock garbage in there 
I've actually gotten quite used to it, and it's much more elegant in my opinion, but just curious what you guys kind of think. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the uh, duration change of the video to the progress bar maximum. And I should warn you right now, if you choose a large video, this will explode your computer, or actually not your computer, but the program. Uh, because um, these take integers and a file takes a Q int 64 or 64-bit integer which is much much larger. So if you're going to uh, do a large file this may actually not work for you. So in a professional strength program, which unfortunately we don't really have time to do, um, you're gonna want to actually you know calculate the value out and then do a percentage etc etc. And whoops, I kind of did that backwards, didn't I? It's okay. So we're going to connect the signals and slots for the slider and the progress bar. Um, there's one more we want to do for the slider here. And we want to say slider. And let's grab this. That's not Q progress bar, it's Q slider. That would have been ugly. That would have been really ugly. Let's actually grab that, put that there. I love copy and paste, it's like the best invention ever. All right, so when the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, position, no, it's not position. Darn it, I thought I was gonna be all slick and I was gonna look through here and just magically know what it was. I'll say slider moved, ah, slider moved, that's what it is. When the slider's moved, and notice how it's an int, then we want to set position. And notice how that's a Q int 64. That's the difference, that's what I'm talking about there, is um, the 64 bit is gonna be much larger than the integer. Some compilers will do that for you magically on the fly, but it's very rare and I wouldn't depend on it. So just know that if you use a large video, something that goes bigger than an int, then you're gonna have problems. So what you would do is you would, you know, you would make your signals and slots and then in the signals and slots you would actually calculate like a percentage of where you are in the file and translate it basically from int to int 64, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I'm sure there's a more elegant way of doing that, but that's how I would handle it. Let's test this out. Oh, come on. Hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Anybody? I know what the problem is. All right, so when we run this, this should automatically work. Let's give this a try here. And you can see how it's showing our progress and the track bar is moving with it. And we can grab this track bar and kind of, you know, move back and forth through here. And if it was, if it's had sound, it would actually play the sound, etc., etc. And we can pause this. And while it's paused, we can seek through it, and it stays paused. Yeah, pretty, pretty neat, huh? So that is the basis of how to make a video player. And I should note that these menu items work too. Like you can actually go here and go play, and it'll because it's calling the same action under the hood. Whew! Sorry for all the babbling. Sorry for the pauses. Like I said, my tongue is just wrecked. I don't know why I bit it so hard, but Skyrim, man. That dude that I shot in the face with the arrow, he really had it coming. He was kind of making me mad. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, hope you found this educational and entertaining. Thank you for watching. And if you want the source code for this and other tutorials, visit my website, voidrealms.com. You go to Tutorials, and then you choose Cute, and it'll be in here. And last but certainly not least, if you're still watching, you're probably interested. On Facebook, we have a Void Realms, all one word, Void Realms group. Just ask to join that group. There's like a hundred and, last I counted, I thought there was like 120 of us in there. We all talk about all different languages, not just cute. So that's it.